de Nirupanas. Nirupana 1, Sunday, November 27th, 1977. All worldly activities are being done for the sake of entertainment of the consciousness of every living being. The quality of the fruit depends upon the quality of the seed. Hence, it is important to listen to good things. What is seen is the reflection of the seer's own consciousness. The pervader, you as consciousness, and the pervaded, the manifest universe, are not different. They are one and the same. That through which space is created is within us. Mind has neither birth nor death. Mind means the speech, thoughts. Mind becomes silent when the word flow ceases. The word comes from space, mind comes through the word, and your behavior depends upon your mind. From this perspective, the first sound word is OM, which symbolizes the manifestation, the first vibration. The mind is formed from the words thereon. In fact, you are not the doer. You wear clothes, but you do not say, I am the clothes. Similarly, learn to say, I am not the body. Your form is of the nature of space. In this discourse, Maharaj is telling us to go back to our source. When we get up in the morning, the first to appear is the seed consciousness, just a feeling of our beingness. In a few seconds, this seed consciousness expands and space comes into existence. In this space, everything is seen, including our own body. This has been happening every day from our childhood. Since then, we have identified ourselves with the body. This deep-rooted impression cannot be dismissed without the guidance of an enlightened guru. The guru asks us to go inwards by saying, I am not the body. I am consciousness within the body. Nirupana 2 Thursday, December 1st, 1977 Brahman, the manifestation, is eternal. However, even the concept I am, Lord Vishnu, does not last. What does that mean? Can the meaning be understood through austerities? It can only be understood through right discrimination. Maharaj points out that Vishnu may be the Supreme One, but when he sleeps, he forgets everything, including his own name. As long as one regards oneself as a body, even if one is an incarnation, one cannot remain in its true state of being. To keep in mind what is heard is meditation. What was done in childhood was true. What was done in youth was true. And what was done in old age was also true. But finally one must realize that it was altogether false as it passed away with time. Liberation means being free. It is freedom from our own concepts, from the bondage of our mind, intellect, and imagination. The self is free from the concept I want to be and requires no liberation. One who has recognized the source of mind and intellect remains free from the resulting harassment. They arise out of body consciousness. But a Brahman, absolute, does not belong to any organization. All cults are concepts, and all concepts are incomplete. What is the guru word? It is, you are not the body, you are Consciousness in the body. Hold on to this. Time will end, but you will never end. One who says, I am the body, will never understand this. 
When there is no time, there is no world. This time is not by the clock. Maharaj says time starts with the birth of the person. It is not the child, but it is time that is born. So, the world is there as long as you are. You know that you are. That is a misery. Consciousness in the body is the reason why everything is seen. This subtle self-sensation is the guru. Always remember this. That is meditation. Even if the pure sense of beingness is not held consciously in the mind, it is always there. The experience of time disappears along with the world, just like the ending of a dream. One who witnesses the dissolution of the universe is certainly prior to it. The situation is like that of a sleeping man witnessing a dream. You will get time for spirituality only when your mind is silent. For this, concentrate on the goal. Krishna says, That through which the world is known is my nature as well as yours. Maya is difficult to grasp. She blocks the path to self-realization unless there is devotion to the guru. Practice non-dual devotion. Catch hold of the knowledge I am. Here, guru is not a physical person. It is your pure consciousness. It is also called jnana. The common meaning of maya is delusion. The root maya is your seat consciousness. By adhering to the Guru's word, you will grow spiritually and be happy in household life as well. It is said that there are three gunas, qualities. Really speaking, there is only one guna, sattva guna, pure consciousness. When it takes up doership, it is tamo guna. When it is active, it is rajo guna. The presence of these gunas is known through worldly dealings. Nirupana 3. A Compilation This Nirupana is a collection of sentences compiled over a period of time. They represent a unique self-assertion of an enlightened person. Generally, Maharaj did not talk about himself. My identity is beyond description. I have no use for myself. Others may find me useful depending on their faith. The eternal truth, Bada Brahman, is always with me. The accumulated experience of 81 years is the only obstacle that has come over me. When I am beyond my sense of I am, how can I commit a sin or a virtuous act? I have seen the existence consciousness bliss Satchitananda in its naked form. Hence I can talk like this. Para Brahman, the unmanifest, is guiding Brahman, the manifest. I am not talking to a person as a person. I am talking to pure consciousness, not the body. As you listen while identified to the body form, you do not understand this. I accepted what my guru taught me. No other advice. Due to maya, I felt that I am, which was not prior to maya. When I realized this mistake, I knew I was always there, but without knowing this. I am fully aware that the devotee is not different from me. I am not talking to the individual but to consciousness and the love within it. We have an eternal friendship only if you keep it up. The difference between you and I is gone. The sense of individuality is replaced with the sense of totality. Now, death has become the nature of the Absolute. My answers to your questions come up spontaneously. I do not think over them. 
My birth is the birth of the world. The source of my speech is the golden womb, Hiranya Garba, through which the world is created. Here, the word is replying to the word. However, I am outside the word. In my identity, there is no light, no darkness, no I, nor you. Who will recognize me in my unmanifested state? I can be known when the knower himself is dissolved. When the passions are silent, there is no urge to go outside. I am the witness of beingness and the non-beingness. I am giving you the knowledge of your true nature. Listen to the same as if it is your own. By the grace of the Guru, I have undergone self-realization. As I have known my true nature, the great scholars cannot compete with me in arguments. Rich people, highly educated people, and dignitaries come to meet me. I behave with them just as I would with anyone. I know why and how one feels that he is. Therefore, I see no difference between big and small. I see no difference between God and the devotee. You will not understand this without discrimination. I was convinced that I had attained a lot of knowledge. And I was also convinced that I had attained no knowledge at all. All these are seasonal concepts. I have undergone all the yogic experiences. I have washed them off, as there is no real greatness in spiritual powers. You must know that I praise consciousness and condemn it as well. People are bothered by their memories. I have baked myself, and I have eaten myself up. The sensation of beingness is a matter of experience, but I and beyond that. Some people claim that they have memories of past lives. I do not have even the experience of myself at any time. No specimen of my individuality will be found in the world. I am only the totality. A life of an extra one hundred years will be of no use to a person like me. I have disappeared with negation. I have no use of my beingness. I am desireless para Brahman. You are listening to me while treating yourself as the body. Hence, this is not affecting you. My saying and your understanding should be reconciled. You may not be able to endure what I will say from now on. Therefore, I ask you to leave. I have no use of myself, but for you I will be available anywhere according to your faith. My form will depend upon your concept. You will meet me according to your concept. The following are the last words of Maharaj before he lost his voice. I feel the pain in the body, but I have no pain of dying. What is manifested is not I. I am that which is always there and which is prior to manifestation. I am not consciousness. On the contrary, consciousness is a nuisance to me. Nirupana 4, Thursday, December 22nd, 1977 your dream is your own. No one else can watch it. Similarly, your world is your own. The fact I am not the clothes I wear can be easily understood. The fact I am not the body cannot be understood without the grace of the Guru. The Guru's word, I am pure consciousness, is as good as a mantra. Self-realization never changes. The greater the understanding, the lesser will be the desires. The nature of the self has no desires. 
Jiva, self, identified with the body, is fond of the body. However, do not forget that even when absorbed in the self, the body should be well looked after. The Guru's words reflects our true nature. After our efforts are over, the true nature shines automatically. One who has contemplated upon the self, even a little, will not need any gods or deities. In fact, he will not need anything. Such a one will not hurt even the smallest creature. After realizing your nature, you will not ask for anything. The body has not been created by you, or by your parents, or by God. It has been created spontaneously. Compared to knowing your true nature, the holy places of the world are nothing. The holy places have their importance through your light alone. Doubting the Guru word is the greatest sin. The light which you see outside arises from your own light. The light of the sun and the moon cannot be compared to the light of yourself. The body pertains to the human being, but the one that acts through the body is not a human being. It is the true nature of the self. Because of body consciousness, you think you are someone or the other. This is not so once the self is realized. You are certainly going to die, but with what identity? The sense I am is making a small gesture towards you. Catch hold of it. It is easy for a man who is disgusted by worldly dealings. The knowledge of beingness is motivating all. The consciousness that gives you the feeling you are is the same as the feet of the Satguru. Be in touch with it. At least remember the fact that your corpse-like body contains the seed of the Absolute. Contemplate on the flame of the Self. The eternal nature of this flame will be understood on self-realization. Keep in mind that this is your own story. Then your worthiness will be as good as that of Brahman. As you do not forget that you are a woman or a man, so also remember, I am Brahman. Do not face death by calling yourself as the body. The meditation on the self is what redeems us. Time will get dissolved into you and not you into time. O oh, Guru, your true nature is my own self. I see no difference in them and that is how I have surrendered to you. This should be your conviction. This knowledge of beingness is like the missile called Brahmastra. It will never fail. Such a person may look ordinary, but he is different. Meditate on the meditator, not on others. It is very fortunate to get to listen to self-knowledge in this way. Nirupana 5, Sunday, December 25th, 1977 People keep themselves busy because they find it difficult to bear their own consciousness. People look for various entertainments to escape from themselves. The greatest challenge lies in looking at oneself, sitting alone by oneself. A much greater number of people have died than those who are living now. Where have they gone? the burden of their bodies weighing millions of tons? What must they be doing now? The answer is that they are now as they were before their birth. The ultimate religion is self-realization. This is an unbroken and fearless state of being. This state refers to consciousness within the body. 
the religions based upon the bodily behavior of human beings take them to their downfall. The highest religion means to live with the conviction that we are pure consciousness. Liberation means to be free. Then one is not affected by the bondage of mind, intellect, and ego. One who follows this gets freedom from all concepts. Only the religion of one's own self will last to the end. That through which worldly dealings are known is our true nature. Though fully immersed in mundane activity, one is not affected. Understand this fact. Be silent and at peace. All your needs will be taken care of. Krishna says, I take the responsibility of sustenance for the one who follows the religion of his own true nature. For him, all that is required is supplied automatically. Spiritual effort is as easy as it is difficult. One who holds on to the Guru's word that I am the self-luminous Atman will find it easy. The highest charity is to offer self-knowledge. A true Brahman is one who knows he is Brahman. Pure consciousness. Those who are truly religious get the reward of self-knowledge. Prana, vital breath, the life force, does all the dealings. Hence, be friends with it. If prana is purified by the Guru Mantra, then it mingles with the universal prana when one dies. Others who do not know take a fall. Prana represents all the types of speech. Para, intuition. Pashyanti, thought form. Madayama, word, unspoken. And Vaikari, word spoken. Manayama is called the mind, and when it speaks, it is called Vaikari. Thus the mind is not different from Prana. Prana is Pranava, the prime audio sound Om. Prana the life force does not differentiate between the worm and a human being. It treats each body the same. The jnani does not see prana as an individual form. To him all is one. Prana of a jnani becomes prana of the universe. Where consciousness is stabilized, there is compassion. That is the only thing left with the jnani. When your prana is pleased, you will come to know. Who really speaks? Is it you or your prana? Nirupana 6, Thursday, January 5th, 1978 Thoughts come and go the way they came. They linger if there is a need. Aniani has not even the need for himself. How does the household of a Niani work? The one that nourishes the child for nine months in the womb takes care of the Niani. How is the child looked after and protected until he gets the knowingness that he has a body? The answer is, the universal consciousness that he is does everything. Even if you live for a thousand years, your identification with the body will not go. How can the one who is light and pure existence be a body? The experience of your beingness without pronouncing a single word is true knowledge. The body is made of five elements. Its essence is the consciousness that resides in the body. Know with certainty that you are not the body. You are without form. You are of the nature of light. You can see light and darkness because of your own light. Om symbolizes the hum of a scent, of breath, the assurance of your beingness. As you get to know your consciousness, you become liberated. If you are not the body, how are you going to act and with whom? 
That is the unshakable, immovable state. Once it is known that you are of the nature of light, there is no further coming and going. You are of the nature of the self-luminous light by whose virtue you can see things. Yet you believe that I am so-and-so, having a body. When the body falls, prana leaves. No one says that prana is dead. If prana is pure, the mind and intellect are also pure. If prana is satisfied, can one have the experience of misery? The power of prana is the same as the primordial maya. It is the same as the power of Brahman. If someone becomes great, it is only by the power of prana. There is love for the word as long as there is ignorance. After knowledge, there is no use of words. After realization, the sense I am is still there, but the attitude of the mind is entirely changed. Continue your chanting of the mantra, keeping its meaning in mind. Think of who should worship whom and why. If you want the Guru's grace, take the word of the Guru as authority. Nirupana 7, Sunday, January 15th, 1978 The movement of prana and the movement of God are not different. Watch your breathing. Without the vital life force, the feeling I am will not be there. Consciousness in the body is the characteristic guna of prana. They are not separate. Once you have realized the self, it is not at all necessary to put on a special pose. That would be a sign of ignorance. To grow a beard, to look impressive, etc., is tied to body consciousness. They are not the characteristics of the self. The concept that you may take for your meditation will be realized, and you will have visions accordingly. They are all unreal. There is no method comparable to listening to such talks. Once you listen to this, liberation is within reach. The manifest principle has movement, but the unmanifest does not. It is without qualities. As old age comes, childhood and youth go away automatically. It is not necessary to renounce them with purpose. Similarly, your ego should naturally fade away. No experience is lasting. There is no creator of the world, nor is there a sustainer, nor a destroyer. All happens spontaneously. What we know becomes the source of our happiness or sorrow. That which is not known to us cannot be the source of our happiness or sorrow. Mind is a concept, and concept is the mind. The concept gives birth to whatever it likes, such as the kingdom of the mind. The self has no association. When one understands the concept simultaneously, one realizes that, which is without concepts. This becomes possible even by listening. What you have learnt from childhood has become the real world for you. Jiva, Jagat, and Brahman, individual soul, the world, and the Supreme Self, are concepts. The concept creates its own meanings, resulting in the three gunas. At the root there is the manifest consciousness. When consciousness becomes active through dealings, the mind is created. The manifest consciousness is the base on which the mind floats. When we get up from sleep, at that moment we feel we are, prior to any words. That is the basic thought. How did this world come into existence? It is like a dreamer 
creating a dream world without doing anything. We feel the world to be real because we feel our body to be real, and vice versa. Though the world is immense, there is not an iota of truth in it. The unmanifest became manifest and created the mind. The mind created the world which appears to be real. The one who goes beyond the manifest and remains in the unmanifest, cannot quite say, Now I am unknown to me. First comes consciousness, then the mind is created through it, followed by all activities. In the absence of consciousness, is it possible to do anything? The feeling I am is a natural concept. That concept is never satisfied. When you try to be one with your consciousness, mind comes in the way. Keep trying. Pay attention to the source from which consciousness has appeared. This consciousness is untrue. The listener should watch himself rather than interfering in the affairs of others. He should take the opportunity to see or know what he is. After knowing the meaning of the concept, you will know that the world is a joke. Absolutely nothing has happened. I have not seen anybody. Nobody has ever seen me. This will be your conviction. Whatever desire you do penance with, it projects on your mind and everything appears accordingly. The life force takes shape and then come the visions. If you act with body consciousness, concepts will proliferate. If you make friendship with your pure consciousness, it will uncover its true nature. When consciousness knows what it is, it vanishes, and what remains is vijnana, true, direct knowledge that has no name. If you behave accordingly, sooner or later you will realize that you never had any experience of the world. Then where is the question of going about in such a world? Till such time you know this, do all your dealings as you like. Look after the household, do not run away from it. When you were born, you were in your natural state, before you started hearing words. After what you heard, which you believed was true, you have come to the present state. What has entered your mind so far is behaving in different ways. The greatest endeavor is to understand oneself. That you must achieve. Then the secret of the world will be understood. When you realize yourself, you will understand the world at the same time. You will know what you are. Have the firm conviction that I am what the Guru told me. In worldly dealings, you can use your identity as a man or a woman, but do not keep it within you. Everything depends upon who you are going to die as. Death is only a word. It is never an experience. What will you experience other than Brahman when there is nothing else other than Brahman? You have become the disciple of the mind. Mind is designing you. Mind does not know its source. Your conviction should rest in the Guru's word. Guru initiated me, means he told me about my true nature. Believing it to be true, if one behaves with conviction, then the truth will be known. From other people's point of view, a man is dead. From the point of view of a jnani, he has become free of his delusion. I am such and such, a woman or a man, is the delusion. First the food gets ready and then the jiva takes birth through that. The nature of the food is the same as that of the jiva. 
The body is only transformed food. It is the food for consciousness. So long as there is consciousness, there is hunger and thirst. Either you become determined to the Guru's word, or you keep on stumbling in vain. That experience to which you are attracted today is false. It will not last. You may take the best nutrition and stay strong. Yet, when old age comes, the hands and feet are sure to shake. Think of that. Surrender to consciousness which says, Jai Guru, Jai Guru. Because you believe that you are the body, such concepts as, I am a child, I am a youth, I am old, occur to you. I am surely here and always will be. The body goes on changing. This is discrimination. Nirupana 8, Thursday, January 19th, 1978. Both reading and listening are necessary, but the knowledge received from the Guru should perfectly tally with what is read and heard. I am exactly like what I have heard and read and what the Guru has told me. This is the way. That which remains after dismissing one's consciousness is the truth. Union with God is yoga. After the union, both of them get extinguished, and the one who witnesses is the Supreme Self, the unmanifest state of being. The body is prakriti, nature, and the one who resides in the body is Purusha, self. The one who acts is Prakriti, while the Purusha is the passive witness. In other words, Prana is the movement and its knower is consciousness. Both the energies have no form. Prakriti and Purusha are not separate. So long as you take yourself as the body, there is no peace. Keep in mind what you have heard and discriminate constantly. One who has realized Prakriti and Purusha becomes liberated. In the body, God is experiencing himself with the feeling, I am. The Guru's word is your beingness. This should be your conviction. Surrender yourself to Prana. Drop identification with the body. One who knows the power of prana is a jnani. His meditation continues all through the day. Concentrate on the source of the vital energy, shakti. This meditation is carried out with that energy. Everlasting peace is the great accomplishment. When both prakriti and purusha are forgotten, there is real rest. By virtue of meditation, the feeling I am so-and-so is lost. To make meditation successful, be faithful to it. Concentrate on the self with the energy of prana. When this energy is arrested, the consciousness becomes one with it, and samadhi ensues. The knowledge received from the books has to be tested with one's own experience. When we get up from deep sleep, the first to appear is microscopic consciousness. It is the feeling I am before any words. The seed consciousness is the cause of all experiences. In no time it takes on the form of the universe. But you have to see how this consciousness is unreal. The world appears with your wakefulness. The experience goes away along with the one who experiences. Catch the source of this knowingness. When an operation is done under anesthesia, there is no pain. If a man dies in that unconscious state, is there any pain of death? 
While listening to these talks, you forget yourself and thereby forget the world. You remain in your natural state of being. Is it not a great benefit? Devotion to the Guru rewards you with self-realization. Nirupana 9 Sunday, January 22, 1978 Your true nature is not different from Parabrahman. Your self-identity is based upon your body and you consider yourself as male or female. It is a mistake that you call yourself a human being. That which is listening now is your true nature. It is pure consciousness. It is a mistake to call it a body. Your true identity, on manifest principle, is there prior to your knowledge. Whatever form you take yourself to be will not last. Actually, you have no birth or death. They pertain to the body. Your consciousness is a result of the activity of the three gunas. It is transient. It is not understood properly because of the three gunas. Your sense of happiness or sorrow is the result of consciousness. But this consciousness will vanish just as fire gets extinguished. The supreme fire is self-realization. Does the sun know that its brightness varies? You experience the fact by virtue of your own light. The most important of the three qualities is the quality of knowing, sattva. You know everything through this quality. Who creates the houses, machines, roads, etc.? Is it not due to someone's consciousness? You enslave yourself because of your needs. You will be free from this slavery when you realize that consciousness which is listening is free and formless. It is your true nature. Recognize that by which you feel you are alive. To tell you about your true nature as to what it is and how it is, is the meaning of the word Nirupana. What you conceive through the mind will not last. Sense of me and mine is the natural characteristic of consciousness. Catch hold of the main guna, sattva as jnana, the quality of knowingness. Live a life without expectations. Then automatically the attachments will fall off. Recognize that you are without requirements. Your true state is spontaneously there. Do not disturb it through mind. You have always taken God as your support. That does not mean that you know God. Rama, Krishna, and Vishnu are names of bodies. They are common to great devotion because they have realized the truth. A devotee can have visions of the deities if he meditates on them according to what he has heard. What is the source of that vision? He himself is the source of it. Whatever you have taken for granted has no value. Worldly dealings are not under your control. They will keep on going. Once you are stabilized in yourself, you will never feel a want of anything. Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, God is creator, sustainer, and destroyer, are the names of your own self. Jiva is born as a matter of course along with time. There is desire associated with the jiva. Your knowledge of the world depends upon your consciousness. When someone says, I go to the subtle, what does it mean? It, of course, implies consciousness. Your sense of, I am. It has no shape, no color. It has a taste. 
the awareness that you are. What is the relationship of this knowledge to you? Does it die when the five elemental body ceases to be? Think of how you would appear if you were not the body. Keeping in mind what you have heard and pondering over it is the greatest penance. Through the practice of this kind of meditation, you will go on changing continuously and you will reach a stage where there is no further change. The truth has no knowledge of itself. It is unmanifest. Attend to this goal constantly. Drive away body consciousness from your mind. No matter how much you insist, you cannot be a man or a woman forever. The five elements will merge into the five elements. Even if you do not understand all this, at least understand that by which you know you are. Once again, meditate on your goal continuously. It will enlighten you. Your mind needs some support. You cannot bear your consciousness without having something else to think over. To meditate on the self is possible only with the grace of the Guru. Such meditation is unique not commonly found in the world. The nature of time is such that it will not allow anything to remain steady. If you cannot focus your attention on the goal, consciousness, call it as Guru and say, I am meditating on my Guru. This is simple. The world is a creation of your own consciousness. Purusha is the passive witness the seer and prakriti, the power of prana, is doing everything through the body. Mind, intellect, and intuition are all names of the energy of prana. There is no separation between jnana, consciousness, and prana, the life force. They are two sides of the same coin. Hence, if prana is pleased, consciousness is pleased, Meditate on the life force. Then meditation on consciousness will take place indirectly. Both have no form. All activities take place because of these. How can one say that they, jnana and prana, are dead when the body dies? Your thoughts of me and mine do not allow you to know yourself. Hence you live in an undignified manner. At least remember what Purusha and Prakriti are. Achieve union with Prana. Prana is God. It implies movement. In the end, the knower of the movement and the movement itself both merge into that non-qualitative state. For the sage, the occasion of Prana leaving the body, the occasion of the great departure, is a celebration. Wait for a moment at the door of God. All the four kinds of liberation are there. The meaning of this quotation is that if, for a moment, your attention is fixed on yourself, you will be liberated. The Guru liberates you. He initiates you by saying, Your true nature is like my own. He gives you the mantra, not taking you as male or female, but as the consciousness that listens. Jiva is perfect, and yet he is moaning with the fear of death. The sage feels compassion for the jiva, for its condition. That is the reason why he sometimes gets angry and impatient. Nirupana 10 Sunday January 29th, 1978 When you look at the moon, what do you see between your eyes and the moon? The space in between is not seen. Similarly, your own light through which you look is also not seen. They are one and the same. 
Your consciousness is of the nature of space. The creation in descending order is as follows. First comes the seed consciousness, i.e. the feeling I am. Then space, followed by the other four elements. This is the sequence. The one who has realized his own consciousness, its cause, and its duration, is the knower. He does not act. When the king is seated on the throne, the administration goes on, just because he is. Similarly, the knower does not act. Along with birth, the feeling I am arises. Before birth, there was no such feeling. The vital energy carries out all the actions. The knower is beyond the known. The knower means the Supreme Self or the Paramatman who is prior to consciousness. It is the unmanifested state. It is the true nature of everyone. One who has realized this state is called a Nyani. The ignorant person takes the feeling I am as the body. The seeker takes it as pure consciousness. But the Nyani does not identify with anything. After listening to this, compare it with your present state of being. There was no concept before birth but an eternal, peaceful reality. The concept I am comes through the power of the sattva guna. Because of ignorance, one apparently enjoys body consciousness. The seeker enjoys it as knowledge. The knower is beyond knowledge. A realized soul is beyond that enjoyment altogether. Sometimes it is said that a remedy can be an obstacle. Yet there is one remedy available to you. Chant your mantra. With faith in the one who has given you the mantra, your consciousness will become stronger. As a result, there will be no weakness in your actions. The greater the faith in the guru, the earlier the success. If you take your guru as a human being, your consciousness will harass you. One who follows this faithfully will enjoy liberation in this very body. To surrender means to be without body, consciousness. To offer everything to Brahman means to be without quality. Act with the conviction that the consciousness that sustains the universe is within your body. On your own, you are unable to do anything. All the actions are carried out by the life force. The Guru introduces you to consciousness. Because of your presence, the pure consciousness, the places of your pilgrimage become holy. There is nothing more sacred than consciousness. When you realize yourself, there will be nothing as holy as you. When you get this conviction, there will be no need for associating with others. One who has pride of his so-called enlightenment is ignorant. How can one have any pride when he realizes that nothing has happened? Love implies our need for beingness. Love is infinite and unlimited. It is consciousness that has arisen in us unknowingly. It is without shape, caste, or creed. It is the pure quality of the vital energy. It is the power of this love by which we feel that we are. And the Ani never competes with anyone. Therefore, he is beyond criticism. Those who dislike Kanyani are unripe due to their body consciousness. They do not understand what Kanyani says. With the grace of the Guru, the understanding could come in an instant. Do not impose body consciousness on the Guru who is without quality and without form. What you are hearing now is the knowledge of the experience of the self. It is not hearsay.
Whose is this voice? When was it created and why? It is the voice of prana. It is not your voice. Meditate with your consciousness, not with the body. Only love moves around in the form of the three gunas and the five elements. It is self-love. Devotion to the Guru opens your eyes. That which is seen without the eyes is superior. Before the eyes open, the light has got a dark blue shade. As soon as the eyes open, it becomes colorless. Be loyal to the Sadguru. Do not impose your body consciousness on him. After recognizing the seed consciousness, everything becomes an offering to Brahman. Such a person becomes unattached to worldly affairs. Who is talking? Is it you that is talking? The word belongs to space, and you are beyond space. My guru used to say no matter how old you are, you are only a child. The body gets older, yet consciousness is always in the present moment. It is like a newborn child at all times. There are various kinds of practices in the world. To work miracles after getting spiritual powers is a type of learning. I do not get into that. I only studied the nature of the self as taught by my guru. In comparison to the realization of the self, all else is meaningless. Without faith in the guru, you will wander about going to various teachers and holy places. If you follow your guru's word, it will not be necessary to go anywhere. Nirupana 11 Thursday February 9th, 1978 Consciousness can observe only that which undergoes change. That which is eternal cannot be observed by consciousness. Therefore, it cannot be known. The concept, I am so-and-so, is not permanent. One who knows this is everlasting. Concepts and desires appear with the body and also disappear with the body. All that is known is a concept. However great the knower of the self may be, what he teaches is still a concept that pleases him. All your actions are transient. It does not matter how long they last. What is today? Not a trace of it will remain tomorrow as nothing is everlasting. What will you do when the mind flow stops? The one who knows what he is will never censure anyone. The world is bound by the three gunas. One who knows the gunas does not censure the gunas. So long as you consider yourself a body with a name, there is no direct knowledge of the self. Without that, one becomes a tattler who blames things on someone else. All wordy attacks are the result of body consciousness. The feeling, I am, which everyone has, is God. So whom will you criticize? The respect you give to the Guru, the same will be created in you. Guru means jnana, consciousness. Guru means parabrahman. Atman is the self-luminous knowledge. It is of the nature of God. His very form is this knowledge. The feeling that you are is the soul of the world. Remember this constantly. Put aside what you have learnt from books. As long as you think you are separate, you have to do sadhana, spiritual practice. Whatever happens or does not happen is within God and by God.
You are not concerned with that. To keep this awareness throughout the day is constant meditation on the self. Whether prana leaves today or 10,000 years from now, there is no gain, no loss for Niani. Faith in the Guru and understanding received through the Guru's word cannot be compared with anything else. It is so pure. Consciousness is spotless, formless, and prior to intellect. Worldly knowledge is born out of the word. Without your consciousness, would the sun exist as the sun? As you identify yourself with the body, you cannot even imagine the immense consciousness. Everything is transitory. One who knows that is eternal. What you take yourself as, its effects will be felt by you. If you live with the understanding that you are Brahman, the same will be your destiny. Consciousness as I am is atomic. The moment it comes into being, it becomes self-luminous and creates the immense world. How can you put an end to things that have been created by your own light? Nirupana 12 Thursday, February 16th, 1978 Your consciousness contains the immense phenomenal world, yet it appears outside. As it is created from this subtle consciousness, it is untrue. Only Brahman is true. Hold tight to that knowledge. That is true meditation. As long as you look for personal benefit, you will not get self-realization. Atman is our true nature. It is the formless consciousness. With the combination of body, prana, and Atman, there is the sense I am. Put aside your problems, if any, and get stabilized in the self. The body has a form, but consciousness within the body has no form. By taking the body as our form, duality is created. It brings the experience of happiness and misery. Worship only consciousness by which all of this is experienced. It is beyond intellect. The knowledge jnana is called the guru. That means the knowledge that the teacher has is the guru. Where there is an experience of the self, there is bliss. We are that bliss. Consciousness is the hum of beingness. To catch hold of it is meditation. People say, they are happy, but has any one of them experienced bliss? Our true nature is neither happiness nor sorrow. The self itself is happiness. To worship the Guru is to worship his word. It means to worship our own consciousness. I am is beyond the mind. It is also beyond the qualities. Its nature is like space. It is the all-pervading firmament of consciousness. It is fearless, just as space is fearless. It is stupendous and fathomless. Keep your attention on it. Worship it without bringing in duality. Do not identify with the body. You are the ocean of bliss. In summary, worship the word of the Guru. I am not the body. I am the formless pure life force or Brahman that vitalizes the body. There is no limit to happiness where there is no body consciousness. Consciousness will sustain you in every sense if you have faith in the Guru's word. When your inner urge is devotion to the Guru, death has no effect on you. 
Consciousness appears in various forms, including different types of visions. One who is firmly established in the Guru's teaching has no fear. Because of body consciousness, the Atman who is of the nature of perfect bliss has to endure misery. Do not take yourself to be an individual. Stay with the awareness of the manifest totality. Its body is space. Take the Guru's word to your heart. It will enable you to see and experience clearly the seed within. That seed has become the world. Though it moves about in myriad bodies, it is spotless. Hence you need not worry about the purification of the body. You do not require rules and regulations of any creed. Your consciousness will slowly crystallize and you will realize your true nature. The concept of death will seem ridiculous. The true religion of a devotee is faith. Strictly observe the Guru's word. I have no other form but consciousness. Then do what you like. Do not worry. It is a waste of intellect and energy. Spontaneously everything is happening in God, through God, and by God.